Okay, this is somebody called Boy with a Drone, and this is Devil's Tower in the best shot I've seen. Now, remember the wrinkle zone at the top. Remember all the filaments. You can see there's some different colors and some moss growing here and there. Now, look at this here and this here very, very carefully. You see that? You see how that's growing? That's not coming straight up. This is weaving in. This is the back of the heel. This wraps around the bone. Let me show you anatomically what we're looking at. All right, once again, this is the back of the heel. This wraps around down the bone and it secures the foot. Okay, just so you all understand, fair use means that I can use copyrighted materials, any copyrighted material done for a limited and transformative purpose, such as to comment upon, which is exactly what I'm doing. Such use can be done without permission from the copyright owner, and I'm not breaking any laws. Now, I was just deleted from Facebook for using some copyrighted material and I'm gone from Facebook so don't look for me there <laughs> anyway I am going to obviously use copyrighted material because I have to I have to say what I, my claims are against their claims therefore I have to cite their evidence okay so here we're going to go into looking at Devil's Tower what it's made out of how it occurred this way what I want you to see is this wrinkle zone at the top and then look at these structures around the edge, how they come around and fold into each other. And these little uh, filaments. Alright, there's some trolls out there trying to destroy my research, showing Devil's Tower with this underneath of it. These are corn, baby corn roots. It has nothing to do with roots. It's a body part. Let's take a real close-up look at what the synovial sheath looks like. These are the tendon fibers. This little wrinkly stuff is literally the synovial sheath. You see how it's peeling off here? That is the slippery, gooey stuff in between. Every single fiber has that wrapped around it so it can slide against the next one. All right, I believe this is what they call a spearfish region where it's all the red flesh is. The guy died and fell over this way. Now, we will be seeing all of this, speaking how depth, is, what it is, and how it's made out of certain types of materials. They did a study in 1954, and we're going to refer to that in a minute. Now, something else I always point out, wherever you have red blood, you have green vegetation. That's the nature of red blood. Blood meal makes plants grow like absolutely incredibly. Okay, this is from Alame, and this is probably copyrighted. I'm not using it to try to take anything away from them. I want to show that this is bloody red clays that are from the bloody red flesh of the creature that died here when he fell over. All right, this is just another shot. Sean, they break flat as a pancake. That's called an abrupt transition, and there's a wrinkle zone because these tendons are under tension. When they break, boing, you get that abrupt transition. Okay, I'm just going to leave it at this about the two legs. They always have two legs. I mean, I have two legs. Normally, this guy is going to have two legs. One of them is deep in the ground, I believe, pushing the other one up. That's the only thing I can take away why only I see one leg. And I see this frequently, one instead of two. They weren't just standing on the ground, drowning. They were trying to push themselves out of the mud. Okay, it doesn't get much more obvious than this. You see this right here? That is the wrinkle zone where the tendon has wrinkled once it got cut at the top or actually eroded away. But they're under tension, so they go boing and they break down. Now, this is below the abrupt transition zone, so it's not all wrinkled up. You see the red spots here? This is, there's some blood in this. Obviously there's blood here and there. there's some blood here. Not a ton of it in tendons. All right, this is at um, Devil's Post Pile. And this is like a shoulder joint or something like that. But it's got the abrupt transitions, the same thing with the wrinkle zone and uh, the tendon fibers. 
Okay, I go back to whatever I can get as far as deep understanding of the topic I'm dealing with, and this happens to be Devil's Tower, and this is the contri uh, contribution to general geology. 1954, I believe. Let me come down here. This is like an introduction. So forth, we get down to where we get into the geology. It says, the geology of Devil's Tower... National Monument was mapped during the summer of 1954 by the U.S. Geological Survey, and it's quite, quite detailed. Uh, so let's take a couple of quick peeks, and then if you want to go through this, I'll leave a link. Let's just read this real quickly. This is the geology. The rocks exposed at Devil's Tower National Monument may be divided on the basis of their origin into two general types, igneous and sedimentary. Igneous is their, their central core. Now, sedimentary is, uh, the, they'll speak about that in a second. The tower itself is composed of igneous rock. That is, rock formed directly by cooling and crystallization of molten materials. That's completely wrong. They are tendons. The rocks exposed in the remainder of the monument are sedimentary. No, they're not. They're actually biology that has eroded down from. All right, so they're sedimentary. That is, they were formed by the consolidation of fragmental materials derived from other rocks or accumulations of chemical precipitates that were deposited either on the floors of prehistoric seas or near the shores of such seas. No, they weren't. They were the biology that deteriorated away and left the extremely tough tendinous material. What do they consist of? These rocks, which crop out around the igneous mass, the big intrusion, are layers of shale, sandstone, siltstone, mudstone, gypsum, and limestone. These are all body parts. Devil's Tower owes its impressiveness to the differing rates of erosion of these rock types. The soft sedimentary rocks eroded more easily, which is the fleshy stuff, yes, than the hard igneous rocks, which is the tendons, yes, and to the contrast of the somber color of the igneous columns to the brightly colored red bloody colored bands of sedimentary rocks that surround its base. All right, when they looked at it closely, they found out that there's a lot of it is feldspar, and then a lot of it is um, um, magnetite, calcite, kaolin clays, chlorite, and all of the body parts, all of the chemistry of the body parts. All right, so they get into the sedimentary rocks. Now the spearfish formation is that red bloody spot I showed you. And they say this, it, it cut into the southern and south northeastern parts of the Devil's Tower along the valley of the Bell Fork River. And I showed you that. It's tributary and forms conspicuous brownish-red to maroon, which is body flesh, cliffs that border the valley for several miles in Devil's Tower region. That's where all that red stuff is. It's from 400 to 600 feet thick. That's how thick this guy's body was. However, only the uppermost hundred feet are exposed within a national monument. Okay, we're deep into this, and it just says that there is no explanation for the origin, the origin of Devil's Tower. Origin of Devil's Tower has been a matter of speculation for many years, and even today, after detailed geologic mapping of the area, no conclusive proof of its, of its mode of origin can be presented. No, because they can't take into account the biology. All right, this is basically the chemistry. Clay is down here at the real gushy end of things. Sand really runs off before the mud is. Sand is the heavy-duty skin. 
then mud is the fleshy stuff right below and then it gets less muddy and you get some connective tissues and then it gets a little organs and so forth and then by the time you get down to where you're in the lime and the limestone CaCO3 calcium carbonates you are really in that tough stuff which is devil's tower and this is all the stuff they said was the sedimentary stuff that ran off it's all exactly the same this is where you really got to understand what the body is made out of. Limestone is that tough stuff. The mudstone is a little bit, you know, you know, the fleshy stuff. Sandstone is a heavy-duty grip skin. Sodium, silicon here, silicon dioxide make up your tough grip skin. That's not inside your body as much. All right, here it is, right there. There's your abrupt transition, which has your wrinkle zone. Above all this, all that's washed away and the guy fell over and whatever. This is the only thing is at Devil's Tower. It's just about only this big. Absolutely amazing how big these things were. Now that's before it broke. But then you get that abrupt transition. Gives you this wrinkle zone. Um, now, and all of this red fleshy stuff around here and so forth. This marl eroded around the base. That's the sedimentary rock. This is the igneous rock. All right, I, I know it sounds very hard to believe, but that's all that it is at, t at Devil's Tower. All right, is this Achilles tendon coming up with the break right there? All of this is eroded away, and the bones and all that stuff will turn into just debris and sediments because they, they don't hold up well in the salty waters, in this hot salty water flood. They just deteriorated. But tendons, whole different story. Muscle, yeah, that de deteriorated, turned into clay, basically mud and clay. And then this is where you get your marl and all that other stuff they talk about as it gets a little more calcinous, you know, a little more calcium in there. All right, you don't see it, but on every one of the end of these little fibrils, there's a ball. There's a ball like this. This is one that eroded away. Yeah, that's where the anchor was. That would have been attached right there to one of those filaments. Deep down inside to anchor the filament. Otherwise the filament pull out and there would be no good. So way down inside are the balls. And they are down inside of Devil's Tower. And these are the straps that come up. What we're looking at is up in this area, the square ones. I'm not kidding you. It's unbelievable how, and this this one here is, I don't know where this is to be perfectly honest, somebody sent me, but you can see how, like there's a, the hexagonal looking one, you see them how they're hexagonal, and then they're also packed in with fibers inside the hexagons. Well, we're way up in this area. We're way up here in Devil's Tower. All right, Devil's Tower is something like this, where all the little fibers come down, are those little square-looking blocks, and then at the very bottom, inside the calcinus, they anchor to, to balls, which are the anchors. Okay, everything I have shown you stacks up to the fact that this is an Achilles tendon, and it is snapped off here, and there's abrupt transition, and you see the the curve of this and how small it really is and how it leans forward. Let me show you another shot of Devil's Tower. All right, this is from a plane. They're taking a picture down. You see it leaning forward? That's going, the le guy's leg was in front. These come down and they wrap around that calcaneal ball that is in the bottom, which is your heel. All this is flesh is run off for miles around here. They call that the uh, spearfish formation. You see this? This is Giant's Causeway. Same sort of situation, only these are muscles. These are the sarcomeres in the muscles. They, they don't have straight fibers like the tendons. But there is also tendons at Giant's Causeway, because it's not a causeway, a, a road leading over across the ocean. It is the creature's body. Now, if you think this is crazy, I'm sorry for you, because you have to open your mind up. It was written that the earth was made of creatures. They, this was written 
And even Jesus said the earth is a body and a corpse. You want to argue with Jesus? Go ahead. This is the mucosa. That is the mucosa. This is the interstitium. That is the interstitium. These black balls are the anchors that hold the interstitium collagens in place so you can move around. They all eroded away. They are so tough that they remain. This, my friends, right up here is biology. And this, my friends, is identical biology, only a smidge bigger. Now, these balls in us are so small that within one inch you would have about a hundred thousand of them in an inch. You need an electron microscope to see them. So consider everything I have shown you. Now open your mind and think a little bit. All right, I've shown you chemistry. I've shown you anatomy. I've spoken about the ancient texts. This is evidence that is very, very hard to dispute. I don't know what you'd say to say, no, Roger, you're wrong. I say clay and mud is the runoff of flesh. And I say a lot of, all of these rocks, well, not all of them, but most of them, are, are body parts of creatures, like a goose. And they basically are all covered with feldspar, which is the preservative that saved them. The collagen bonded with aluminum silicates to form almost like plastic bags to coat all of these different creatures' bodies. And their organs and everything. The organs came out. I have all of this stuff very, very, very well detailed. If I don't say so myself, which I do. So, if you want to pay attention, pay attention. You want to go back to sleep, go back to sleep. Now, I'd, I'd love to give credit to whoever sent me this. Somebody sent me this. I didn't do this myself. But, but this is that Devil's Tower. This is the abrupt transition of Kelly's tendon rupture right there with the wrinkles on. And this is only the tendon. This is not the entire foot. This is what it would look like inside of the foot. That's pretty spectacular. Once again, somebody sent me this. I'd love to be able to attribute it to whoever sent me. I can't find out who it was. But these are tendons. And these are the tendon fibrils. And here they are. And this is like the kind of the size of these creatures. I, I can't account for it. Don't yell at me. It was all written about. And there was Enoch wrote about giants being over... I think it was like two and a half miles tall. And it appears it was correct.